My dad threatened me and told me, I said, hey, if you don't uh, twist that throttle a little bit more, you're going to be working a nine to five. So I was like, I guess I'll put a little effort into it. The great thing about this interview is Malcolm Stewart has no idea of the history that I have with his older brother, James Stewart. James Stewart, a veteran of the Freak Nation. A lot of people don't know that Speed Freaks were your very first professional interview, right? Yeah, very first live radio. I was scared to death, but you guys helped me out. It was hard hanging out with freaks in there. <laughs> your brother came into Speed Freaks Pits 22, 23 years ago when he was... 16 years old and you were this little rug rat running around trying to figure out what the hell you wanted to do now i'm jamming a microphone in front of your face i don't know who's more impressed about being able to put a mic in front of your face or the fact that you're still around doing this facts yeah uh, you know with me it was uh <clears throat> when i was growing up watching my brother i didn't care about racing i love riding a motorcycle but i didn't really care about racing until my dad threatened me and told me i said hey if you don't uh twist that throttle a little bit more you're gonna be working a nine to five so i was like i guess i'll put a little effort into it but no, it's uh, it's just good for me, uh, good for me to be back here. You know, I got taken out of the season injury last year, and I kind of felt like that was I didn't know where I was going to be. It was a two year uh, my my two year contract was ended, so thankfully I was able to uh, lock in a deal with Husqvarna for re up on that one, and they just told me, hey, just get to work somewhere in October, and we kind of started doing work from there, and here we are. You know, so. Uh, again, it's, I'm just glad to be back here and racing, and, 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 and I guess for me, being a little bit, I felt like a little bit of an underdog, like, you know, I didn't race that, I obviously didn't, I missed a whole year pretty much of racing, right, so uh, it's going to take a little bit for me to get back going, but I'm, I'm more relaxed, excited, I felt like last year I had a little bit of pressure on me where you had to do it, this year I feel like I'm more like, you know what, like, you take, you take a step back and realize, like, the good things in life and, and go out here and have fun, you know, we all want to do well, but at the end of the day, you know, we're just dirt bike kids that want to go around the racetrack as fast as we can. But come on, Malcolm. You've, you've been an underdog a whole lot of your life. Let's be honest about that. But you've earned one of the most, being one of the most popular riders because of your personality, the way you ride, the history of your family in this. It's significant for what you've achieved so far even without all these championships. Yeah. I mean, again, for me, it's... It's awesome. I know I'll have to sit back and think about it, and I'm appreciated more and more once ever I actually really hang the boots up. But, uh, yeah, I've been that, I, that guy, an underdog, where people don't expect anything from me. And, you know, usually I perform the best when my back's against the wall. So um, I consider myself like that this year. And I'm just going to go out here and have fun and, and enjoy it, man. It's, it's, a, it's a long series. We've got 31 races to do this. So I'll take it race by race and have fun with it. All right, it was disappointing as hell to get you off that bike last year. But I will say this, Salt Lake City 2022, myself, Crasher with Speed Freaks, we were there at Salt Lake. To hear the crowd get behind you to race, to, to, to race up front, to try and race for that race win, really showed me how popular you are with people. What, what the hell is it? Honestly, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm just thankful. I'm, I'm one of the guys in the fans that people love that love to be around, and um, something about my personality, fans feel like they can relate to, and I'm just thankful. But that's for that. a big deal. Being able to relate to the fans, especially with your personality, you, you could sell a million bikes with your personality and finish at the back of the field. I know. I'm, hey, I don't know. I'm just smooth with it. I guess I don't know. Something about fans, they just love to, you know, uh, to be around me, and I, and I enjoy that. Maybe it's something to do with me fishing. Who knows? I don't know. But I just love, uh, I love my fans, and they, they, they're the biggest reason why I'm still here. Talk about that. Well, they, they are. You hear drivers, riders talk about it all the time. About it. it's for the fans. It's for the fans. But I believe you. No, I mean, honestly, I mean, you sit back and think about it. What's the stadium without fans, right? You know, it doesn't pay for anything or anything like that. And I always think, like, you know, all publicity is good publicity no matter what. And, and just it's – I'm I was a kid here, and I was nine years old. I was in the – I was literally, like, never thought I was actually going to be out here um, racing. And here we are, you know, so 20 years later. And I think it's a cool moment for me every time I go down in the stadium and I, I get out and, I, and I'm riding and I'm like, man, like, it's crazy to think like you would have never thought you would have been here and, 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 and just enjoy that. So I always try to tell fans, any kids or anything, like you're going to be, you know, if you stick to it, you're going to be like me one day. Do you recall Las Vegas, Big James, your older brother, winning that championship? It was such an emotional moment. I don't remember where you were at the moment, but I, I hugged your dad. I hugged uh, 
James, it was such a magical moment to have an African-American go out there and kick some ass, win a championship. Where were you at that time? I don't even. I re, I don't. I don't. I don't really remember. But I. I mean, I remember being there 100. percent Knowing my luck, I was probably getting some popcorn somewhere in the stands. Being a little brother, young little brother. You know, I didn't really. You know, my brother's seven years apart. You know, me and my brother were seven years apart, and I didn't realize. You know, the the accomplishments um, that he did until I got older. Until I really like got into this game, and I didn't really. Again, I didn't really realize it, and and I appreciate that. And and you know, when I Years later, uh, I won a championship in 2016 at 250, and we were the first brothers to do it. And, and yet, alone the only African Americans do that. I think that's like that's that's a cool statement, and, and you know, it's always going to go down to history books. And and we always want to say, you know, um, hopefully there would be another pair of brothers, or just yet alone another African American that can keep that torch lit. So um, it's just a cool, you know, it's just cool to be have a, another brother that that did what I that did what he did I guess again I'm not gonna be able to fill the shoes that he did but you know I'm my own person and I have my own little deal and I'm just excited all right last question who do you not listen to more not listen to more for advice your older brother or your old man um it depends on the mood <laughs> um you know of course I I listen to my dad I listen to my brother you know I, you know, they only want the best for me. So, I mean, there's nothing worse than coming off the track and you know you're already bummed out. And the first thing they ask you is like, what the hell were you doing out there? And that's just like, that's just a trigger word at anybody. You, I mean, you, if you say that to me don't right after the race and it was a bad race, don't expect to me just to say, oh, nothing. I'm a Your fire. dad doesn't mince his words. He never has minced his words. No, he, uh, he, he's the reason why I, I, am where I am at this level. So I respect my old man. I didn't understand it until I got a little older, but there's a reason why he pushed us the way he was. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy that I have to have him around and still have him around. And even my brother's still around like that. So... Again, um, you know, those little words, they will trigger you. But, yeah, I guess at the end of the day, uh, it depends on what mood I am. Dude, you're a lot of fun. Thanks for doing this, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.